G'day guys, it's Darren here again from Global Garage. It's been a while since my last video, so I thought I'd do a nice interesting one on a Sega Saturn. So this one in front of me, this is a, a Japanese NTSC um, Model 2. It's got the round buttons. And I think it's an earlier revision of a Model 2. Um, we'll have a look inside and we'll see what is going on in a second. But the problem with this one uh, is it's just completely dead. Um, no video, no disc spinning, uh, no audio, no nothing. So yeah, it could be a few issues, but um, we'll go through it and uh, we'll see what we can find out. So let me just uh, switch it on. I'll put it all plugged in here. Switch it on. So we get power LED. I can I can hear the disc doing something actually. So it's, there is a small sign of life, but pan up to the uh, screen. I've got this just plugged in with composite video to my Dell to U2711. So it does support composite. Uh, yeah, nothing at all. So it's a bit of concern. So let's pull this thing apart and we'll see what we can find out. Okay, so I'm just going to unplug this. I don't want to. I don't want any voltage applied when I open it up. <clears throat> Five screws, sorry. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five. I'll just go ahead and take them out, and I'll lift the lid in a second. Okay, so the screws are all out. They're they're all the same. Uh, just little black ones. So. Just put them aside and let's lift the lid of this thing. So pull it out of the way. There's not much underneath the Model 2s. They're, re they're really nice and clean. I like working on a Model 2. It's just so much easier compared to a Model 1 with cables and stuff going everywhere. Yeah, okay, so this is the, uh, it is an earlier revision um, of a Model 2. When you see the power supply with five pins, um, they're slightly earlier. This is very similar to a Model 1 power supply. The later ones actually only have four pins, uh, two grounds and two five volts. The whole thing just regulates down to five volts, but on this slightly earlier model, it's two grounds, a 3.3 volt, a five volt, and a nine volt. So this power supply is doing uh, a lot more work and you know, there's a linear regulator there and there's one up there as well. So yeah, a project for another day is to um, pull the power supply out and make a bit of a homemade sort of adapter where we can feed it maybe the nine volts in and then have two different step downs where we go, we step the nine down to five and we step the nine down to 3.3, two different uh, voltage dividers. So it's, you know, I'm kind of thinking about that. I might do that. And that way we can just use an Australian power supply and pull this Japanese one out. But for today, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's plug it back in. Now, you, you gotta be very careful here, you know, I'm applying voltage back on this live machine and, and the pins on the back of that uh, connector there will be live, so you gotta be pretty careful. So I'll just slide that across a little bit. Power on the old multimeter. We're just gonna run DC, uh, DC voltage. We're not gonna measure off the AC, it's not really relevant. I'm sure we are hugging AC. Um, I'm sure this thing is pretty good because we had the LED light up down here. So let's uh, let's first first measure the ground point to nine volts. Oh, sorry, got to turn it on. Oh, well, there you go, LED's on. Ground to nine volts, and yeah, okay. So we're getting nine point three there. So the first half of this circuit is regulating down nicely to nine point three. Uh, the next one should be 5, yeah, 5.4, that's fine. And then 3.3. .3. Yeah, look, it's potentially a touch high, but it's no big deal. So, you know, it's good and bad news. The good news is it's working. Bad news is we still don't know what the problem is. So power supply appears to be good. I, don't, I wouldn't actually go much further on that. So I think we need to dig a bit deeper. So let me uh, pull some things apart and we'll... Have a look a bit deeper into this, maybe onto the motherboard. We'll look at some caps and things. All right, so let's start pulling this thing apart. Uh, let's take out the power supply. A couple of screws. There's also two screws up here on the end. Okay. And then it'll lift out. Uh, 
Okay, that's out. Let's take out the CD, the whole mechanism. We may as well just remove it. I just lift off the power and the ribbon and the ground strap on this side. Just take out that little screw and put that aside. There's a little washer that comes off with that as well, so just be careful with that. Don't lose it. Pull the whole mechanism out, put that aside. Okay, let's go a bit further. Let's take off this tray. Yeah, so just work your way around the edge to take out these little uh, gold screws. Well, RF shield will lift right out, so. Okay, so let's put this base aside. And we're gonna left the motherboard. Um, what do we got here? Let's try and pull this off. So we might just have to lift a bit of tape up, feed it through, and we're off. Okay, don't need that. Well, it's good to see there's not that many caps. That's uh, well, there's a few, but there's not too many. This is just the um, uh, the kind of the tray for the um, the card reader. There's actually a card reader in the back of these. It's for, you know, expansion sort of things like um, video CD card readers. You can buy them from Japan. All right, so let's look at these caps. Um, <clears throat> if we look at them one at a time and we sort of check if they're bulging or not, we can sort of work out if it's failed. So I'm just having a look at some of these caps um, and they've got a bit of a domed top. So I suspect that's probably a good starting point. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna start with replacing um, a couple of these caps. Uh, maybe maybe all of these, but I might just do a couple and just keep testing. Uh, and just that one over there by itself. Um, you know, maybe maybe all of them, but we'll just see how we go. I don't know if I'll start in this area. I don't know if we need to. Um, I think it's more around here. Their problem could be so. Let me uh, get the soldering iron all set up. Um, I've got a mat under me now, so I'll go ahead and just replace one or two and we'll, we'll check it and we'll try again. Right, so I've just gone ahead and replaced uh, these two down here. Um, 10 microfarad, uh, 16 volt was the uh, original. I've just put 25 volts in, uh, that's all I had. And I've just bent them over to keep them flat because um, you know, the profile of this board is really quite low so you've got to keep them really flat um you, you know you can hunt down the correct physical size but you know standard ones are good to go so i just uh desoldered those two to begin with uh not that one and i also did this one over here i've actually seen this one responsible for a lot of problems in the past on other consoles so i'd always highly recommend you swap that one it's also really physically easy to get to that's also a 10 microfarad um 16 volt. I always go with 25 volt, just give it a bit more tolerance. Now the caps I'm using are, are quite cheap. They're just cheap Chinese ones. Uh, they're really not that great at all, but for testing and getting it working, it's probably all you need to do. But if you want to keep this for a long time and it was your personal console to keep, I'd put in really high quality caps, but just you can buy them off the internet. So I think that's probably all I'm going to test with. Um, yeah, it's a little bit shiny down in there. That's just the flux I put on. Um, I always recommend you use flux when you do any soldering. Uh, it just, it just makes the job a lot easier. So I'm going to give that a go. I'm pretty confident that that one's going to give us some results. Uh, and uh, these two just looked a bit dodgy. In fact, all of these look a bit dodgy, but yeah, one step at a time. Don't go too crazy each time. It's better to just do a few and reassemble and give it a quick test. It only takes a couple of minutes to put it back together. So let me just uh, put that back together and we'll do a test.
Okay, so I've just sort of put it back together. I've, you know, just plugged everything back in and fed it some power. Uh, I've got a Japanese game here, an original, just to make it easy. Um, one thing we're going to have to do to test this is just temporarily hold this, uh, this little switch down. This is the, um, the lid trip switch, so it tells the machine that the lid is closed and it'll spin the drive. Hold that, give it a go. Okay, well, we don't have disc spinning, but we've got picture. So those caps seem to have given us some result, which is really cool. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to go a bit further. I think we're gonna have to probably replace, you know, all the caps, but I'm pretty happy with that result so far. Three caps done and we've got a video. So uh, let me just plug a controller in. I'll see if I can get a bit further. So if yours is stuck in Japanese, you know, by default, I'll just show you how to quickly um, set that to English. So on the main menu here, go up to the top middle one, which is like a memory manager. That's how you also access the system settings. Uh, then press, you know, the A button. Takes you into, this is the memory manager and that'll say something like clear memory. So just leave that for now. That bottom left hand corner is exit. And this one over here is system settings. So go to that. Push the A button again, and then this is, um, I think that top one's clock, that's language, and I can't remember what that one is, so go to the middle one, language, and then here we go, English, push A, and now we're all, we're all set, go across to exit, uh, yeah, clock, language, and other, yes, there you go, what was in there, just by, out of interest, yeah, okay, just a few settings, that's cool, exit, um, go back to your memory manager. Uh, yeah, sure, let's clear the system memory while we're here. That's just uh, probably a good step. Exit. And that's it, we're back to the main menu. And now we can, um, now we can see what's going on. So let me do a bit more digging. Just you know, always start with an original when you're testing these things. You don't want any, um, you don't want any extra hassles to get around. Uh, and something else I also did when I was uh, setting the date and time in the in the clock before, I then went and replaced this CR2032 battery in the back here. So you really need to do that before you start messing with the clock because it won't be able to save. Right, so I found the problem with the CD not spinning is because I had this ribbon uh, installed backwards actually, so I wasn't paying attention. I put it in the wrong way. So just make sure you've got... Um, yours in the right way so the blue plastic edge faces uh, into the CD mechanism and the exposed pins face out and on the other side the exposed pins um, face out towards the edge of the board and uh, yeah so get yours the right way around I, I think mine will be fine now so let's uh, I've still got the cover off but yeah let's give this another shot so um, Shin Shinobi Dan also got a bit of tape on the, the lid switch just so we don't have to hold it. That's you know it's a little bit dangerous to reach down there and hold that next to the power. So just tape that up. Um, I'll point you. Actually no, I'll leave you here and we'll fire it up. Okay, there we go. There we go. And I think we're in business. So it should boot the game. Yep, there we go. Clock's all set, it's saving. Those caps seem to have worked, and there we go, yeah. I pulled the controller back out, so I can't push start, but that is ace. All right, power that off. Well, I think when I put this back together now, I don't know if I will go any further. It all, it all does seem pretty good. I'll probably give it a good test um, with RGB and just play it a little bit. <clears throat> um, before I put the lid back on, I will measure the pot on the back of the laser and just see what it's set to and maybe maybe turn up the power a little bit um, you can see that in one of my previous videos on how to repair satins um, more from a laser perspective this video wasn't on that so I'm not going to go into that today uh, just as I went through before swap those caps out as a first start and see how you go if it all fires up like mine did then you're off and running if it if it didn't just keep going just keep swapping out the caps and Swapping out the caps usually fixes things. So, and, and if it doesn't, you've probably got a, a bigger issue like a, a faulty chip or something. But 
we'll leave it there today guys so um thanks again for watching and you know as always i'll try and post up another video here again soon all right guys thanks again